Like most modern PBXs, Asterisk supports a call queuing feature. In this module, we'll explain the ins and outs of call queues in Asterisk. We'll define some related terms in an Asterisk specific context, and then look at how call queues and queue members are configured in Asterisk. We'll also show you some ways to obtain vital queue statistics and logging information. So what is a call queue? It's common for an organization to have more inbound callers than people available to answer. A call queue is a sort of holding pen that lets the PBX automatically distribute calls in an organized fashion. The system connects the call to a person when one becomes available. You have likely been in a call queue and heard phrases like, Please stay on the line and your call will be answered by the next available representative. Most call queues, including those in asterisk, can provide services like hold music or estimated wait time to the caller. Generically, somebody who answers a queue might be called an operator, agent, or representative. Of course, Asterisk doesn't really know anything about the person who might answer a phone, but it is configured to know about the devices that are set up to answer queue calls. Within Asterisk, the very specific term of queue member is used to describe a phone or device configured to answer queue calls. Older versions of Asterisk had a feature called agents that were related to call queues, but for reasons outside the scope of this course, the feature was deprecated and is only kept for backwards compatibility. It is not recommended for use. Still, it can be confusing and inaccurate to refer to queue members as agents, so we encourage you to avoid using the term agents and instead use the term member when talking about asterisk call queues. Now that we've covered some of the basic terms, we can demonstrate how to configure a simple call queue. As you can guess, to do so we edit queues.conf. The typical general section is at the top where there are many options to configure queue behavior. Of course, options set in the general section apply globally for all queues unless they're overridden by per queue configurations. We'll use the default general settings for our sample queue and discuss some of the specific options in a later module. To start configuring our queue, we'll add the name of the queue in square brackets at the end of the general section. We will call this queue support. Immediately following the heading, we'll supply our queue options. Strategy declares what ring strategy will be used when trying to connect callers to members. Valid ring strategies include ring all, fewest calls, least recent, and RR memory, which stands for round robin memory. For our example, we'll use RR memory. This strategy maintains an order to the queue members, and when attempting to deliver a new call, it remembers where it left off in the previous attempt. If member number four received the last call, then it won't receive another call until all of the other members have been rung. This makes it so that on average, all available members are tried with about the same frequency. We'll also set a wrap-up time for this queue. Wrap-up time is a grace period given to a queue member at the end of a call. Even though the member is off the phone, the system waits for the wrap-up time to complete before considering them available for another call. This extra time can be helpful in case the representative needs to log notes or perform other actions related to the call. Wrap-up time in asterisk is configured on a per queue basis. Individual queues are configured using the wrap-up time option. The default is set to zero, which means no wrap-up time is given. Wrap-up time is specified in seconds. Most queues will specify more than just two options, but this is enough to get started. Now that we have the queue configured, we'll connect to the asterisk CLI and load our changes by running queue reload all. Now we can run queue show to verify that the queue exists. Queue show will output the information for all of the configured queues, which could be overwhelming on a system with many queues. Queue show support will show us just the support queue. We see here that asterisk has read our configuration and our queue is now available. Of course, defining a queue in queues.conf doesn't matter if we don't have a way for calls to be placed into it. The dial plan application queue places a call into the specified queue. Similar to the dial application, there are over a dozen options you can specify to precisely customize the queue application. We won't worry about those because all that's necessary for a simple setup is the queue name. Core show application queue on the Astra CLI will display the various parameters that are available to the queue application. We've added extension 6400 to extensions.conf and set it to place calls in the support queue we've just created. We'll now run dial plan reload on the Astra CLI. From a registered SIP phone, we'll dial 6400. You can see hold music has been started on the channel. Executing queue show similarly tells us that there is one caller, SIP phone 1, in the support queue. We have now placed a call into our queue but there are no members in the queue to answer the call. Members can be configured either statically or dynamically. 
The next two modules will cover both ways of configuring queue members. It's often important to be able to track what's happening in your call queues. Asterisk provides several ways of getting information about your queues. We've already demonstrated the CLI command, queue show, which displays a list of configured queues, their current members and colors, and some high-level stats about each. We've also discussed that you can limit the output of a single queue by putting the queue name after queue show. These CLI commands offer a good real-time glimpse at queue performance. Asterisk also offers a detailed log of queue events in a file called queue log, usually stored at var log asterisk queue underscore log. This file tracks a wealth of queue related data, including when members log in or out, call hold times and talk times, which calls abandon, and whether a call was ended by the member or the caller. This data can be put into a database for automatic analysis without too much trouble. The queue log on our test system won't be very interesting yet because we only have that one queue call and it wasn't even answered, but the queue log is an invaluable tool for active queues. Additionally, there are several third-party tools that make queue monitoring and management even easier. Querying for asterisk queue reporting or asterisk queue stats in your favorite search engine will point you at several available utilities. At this point, you should have a basic understanding of what call queues are and how they function in an asterisk. You should know how to set up a very simple queue and understand how to set up the dial plan to use it. You should also know how to get information about your queues from the CLI or from the queue log. We'll now move on to the next module where we can see how to populate the queue with members. We'll be distributing calls in no time. 